okay we're being very punctual today and starting bang on one o'clock so hello everybody and thank you for tuning in uh, we're excited to welcome you to our masterclass on researching law firms and this is one of our many autumn term careers masterclasses in which we aim to give you all the information you need to make successful law firm applications so you might have seen that we recently i think a couple of weeks ago ran a masterclass all about starting out in law and you can catch up with that video on our youtube channel now and the next careers masterclass is on the 17th of october and that's all about um, how to make a law firm application but before we get there, we wanted to tell you all about the research process, which is obviously a very important part of making an application, and that's the aim of today's session. So we always start our masterclasses with our learning outcomes. So by the end of this masterclass, you should have identified key methods to use when researching law firms, know the unique selling points and recruitment processes at our firms here today, and understand what's expected from you at this stage. Before we get going, uh, just a few house rules to run through as usual. So first and foremost, do use that Q&A question tool to post any questions that you have. I will be uh, keeping an eye on those and posing them to our speakers throughout and we'll save some time for a Q&A at the end. Do use that to let us know if you're having any audio visual problems as well and a member of the team will do their best to help you. Yes, this masterclass is being recorded and the recording of the session will be sent to everybody after today and it's gonna go on our YouTube channel shortly too. And finally, we have so many fantastic masterclasses coming up. As I said, do check the Law Careers Net events page for all of them. Our next one's actually two weeks time, Tuesday the 8th of October, all about working in private equity. And then as I mentioned, we have our Law Firm Application Masterclass on the 17th. So links to those will be in the follow-up email going out tomorrow as well. Right, I'm gonna just start by doing a poll as we normally do, just so I can see who's here with us today. So if you could just take a minute to answer that question, let us know what stage you are at, and I will close it in about 20 seconds time. And I shall share the results for our panelists. Right. So we've got a few first years with us, which is great to see, and a lot of second and third year law students, a lot of postgraduates and, and some non-law students and some of you in work as well. So thank you for that. And then our second poll is, we'd love to know what are you most worried about in terms of researching law firms? I put some options here and obviously if, if, you, if it doesn't match, you can put something else. But is it that you don't know where to start the research process? Is it that you think firms all seem similar and you're not sure how to identify their USPs? Is it understanding if you're going to be a good fit with a law firm? Or is it how to showcase your research in your application itself? And I can see loads of you are answering. So just let me give you 10 or so more seconds. Pretty even split, actually. Um, I think the majority, let's see, the majority was showcasing your research in the application. So we were definitely be talking about that. Lots of you saying about identifying USPs and we're going to be giving you some tips and hearing from the firms here today their advice. Don't know where to start the research process. You've come to the right place and understanding if you're a really good fit. Well, I'm really here, uh, keen to hear from Alex and Nikita here today who are our trainee and our associates. So they'll be able to help you a bit with their process for that. So going to stop sharing that and I think it's time to get ready so I think I've mentioned that we have a mixture um today we've got recruiters got an associate and a trainee I'll let them all introduce themselves in the order that I can see them so Alex over to you first please thank you very much it's a real pleasure to to join this join this session and I hope everybody will get a good use of it I'm personally I'm a, I'm a law graduate from uh, northern Norway I have uh, worked in, in a range of law firms in, in Oslo, some trainee experience, which can be uh, considered as uh, kind of extended vacation schemes. So that in, in Oslo. Afterwards, I did a banking and finance LLM at LSE. And again, after that, I did some uh, vacation schemes uh, just to get some legal experience here in London and see how law firms work, uh, including at Jones Day, uh, sitting across here. So it's quite... Uh, Quite a coincidence that we're sitting here at this at this panel and right after i secured uh, my training contract at watson fall in williams where i now work as a trainee i worked as a paralegal at a hedge fund called uh, millennium so I, I was in other words an in-house paralegal so a bit of a variety of a uh, of experience here great thank you so much alex i'm looking forward to hearing from you and nikita you're next for me please uh, pleasure to meet you all. Um, my name is Nikita and I'm a newly qualified associate at the uh, Global Disputes Department at Jones Day. Um, I come from a 
non-law academic background. I studied history and then Mandarin as part of my degree, going through the uh, the PGDL at uh, BPP and then the LPC shortly thereafter. So um, I understand the system has now changed to the SQE, but I unfortunately have no experience with that. Um, and uh, you know, I, I did a bit of paralegaling before um, joining the firm as a trainee uh, just over two years ago. Um, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I'm mostly from a non-law background um, and have quite a bit of contentious experience, which I'd be happy to kind of talk more about over the course of today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Eagle, you're next for me. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so my name's Eagle. I work in the early career team here at Watson Farley. Um, and we look after everything from recruitment of trainees and running vacation schemes to looking after um, Alex and the rest of the trainees throughout their training contract and hopefully help them successfully secure NQ roles at the end of their two-year TC as well. And Olivia. Hello everyone, um, I'm Olivia Coppin. I'm part of the graduate recruitment and development team at Jones Day. Similar to Eagle, we as a team sort of look after the full um, sort of spectrum of recruitment all the way through to looking after our trainees upon qualification. Um, I've been at the firm just over five years. So and my role within our team is predominantly on the recruitment side um, and managing our sort of events program um, and meeting lots of brilliant students, which is what I really enjoy. Um, sort of screening applications, being involved in the recruitment process in terms of interviews, assessment centres, vacation schemes. Um, but I'm also part of that team that helps to look after the trainees as well. Thank you. Um, Olivia, sticking with you, I mean, we've got a lot to get through. And I think perhaps the first thing in terms of researching firms is understanding why it is so important or why we're running this session. So could you summarise the importance of research or iterate the importance of researching a firm and, and why you need to do that before you make an application? Sure. Well, I think, you know, having this event at all will ho hopefully help to just emphasize the point that research is so important as part of making law firm applications and sometimes overlooked or sort of forgotten about in terms of how important it is. So I tend to see it as the invisible first stage of any application um, process and it should be, you know, attention should be given to it in, in that way. Um, you know, I can see the temptation to want to kind of dive straight into applications, particularly and, you know, we are an example here of we do review applications on a rolling basis. So understand that pressure to, you know, apply as, as soon as possible. But I think it really does pay to put some time and effort into that prior research, um, because I think it will it will only benefit you in terms of what you can gain from, from research, but it will actually make the application process a lot easier because you're giving yourself lots of information, knowledge and experience, you know, to pack your application with. So, so it's really important. And I think the overall purpose of that research I sometimes think is sort of twofold. I think there's the sort of introspective, you know, it's taking time to really think about what interests you, what do you want from your career? Um, you know, what are your strengths based on, you know, your previous experience or, you know, your academic history? And then the kind of external research, that's where you're trying to find that match between your kind of interests and strengths. And you're trying to find that law firm or a small number of law firms that you, you see those connections where there's alignment with your interests um, and your strengths. Um, so absolutely, it's hugely important. Um, and yeah, we'll only make your applications, you know, better. Um as, as a result of, of taking that time and effort. Yeah, that's a great summary. And I think when we talk about making a law firm application, that's almost like the research is almost like the biggest part of that, um, should almost take more time than actually sitting down to write. So just worth thinking about that in terms of waiting, um, sort of how you're um, applying. Um, and Eagle, just really the basics, you know, let's think about what are some of the things that applicants should be considering when it comes to researching a firm and all those other things that Olivia mentioned? Yeah, I think Olivia covered a lot of it. 
Um, and I'm just going to re-emphasize the importance of understanding what you want. So try to uh, sit down and uh, have a think about what kind of characteristics you're looking for in a law firm. Uh, you know, if you are set on working within a particular sector or a particular se uh, practice area, focusing on firms that do that well is always a good place to start. Um, you know, what in terms of in terms of size, would you like to be part of a large intake of trainees? Would you prefer being one of quite a few uh, or, or or of a smaller intake? Um, you know, those kind of things as well, and looking at sort of secondment opportunities, if you're looking for an international aspect to the work you're doing, um, that will help you uh, start creating a list of firms that you're interested in. Um, try to find firms that fit with as much of what you're looking for as possible, obviously, um, and uh, start your applications on that. Obviously, it can be a bit hard to know. If you're literally sitting down now, it's your first day looking at this and thinking, oh, well, all law firms look the same. I have no idea where to start with it. Um, there are loads of profiles on online, loads of different websites where you can start having a look at what makes some firms different from others. Um, and that might help you maybe differentiate the kind of firm that you would like to be part of. Because... That's not just important for when you do your, when you uh, put together the list of firms you want to apply to, that's going to help you later on in your application and your interview, because the question all the firms will ask is, why have you applied to us? And if you can base that on you having a strong motivation for what we do, for example, that's a lot better than deciding to apply for us and then reverse engineering your motivational answer afterwards. That's a great point. Thank you very much. And I think we'll talk a bit more um, towards the end about how to really sort of um, put your research into the application and, and make it that sort of um, perfect match between you and the firm. Um, just want to hear from Alex and Nikita, because obviously you've been through the process quite recently. So, Alex, I'll start with you. you know, did you have a broad research strategy? Where did you find that information and what were your what was your kind of plan for that? Thank you for your question. So when I first Yes, entered um, you know the UK legal market. You know it was quite different from from abroad. So quite many sources. So I tried to distinguish them a little bit. I would say dividing them into the external sources, um, for example, news media, legal publications, um, and also internal sources, or in other words, the law firms' own sources. So externally, I could use student-oriented web websites such as Legal Cheek. Uh, chamber student, all about law, and so on, for like a quite a good digestible starting point. And other legal publications which I found helpful was, for example, Legal Five Hundred, that give quite good, that give quite excellent uh, summaries of deals, as well as Chambers and Partners. For example, when I was researching Watson Farley and Williams, I saw they were uh, you know band one in shipping finance, so I absolutely knew that they were quite serious. They were very serious in this business. So that that kind of helped also to verify what was actually said in the websites, uh, what graduate recruitment also, you know, wrote down on the on, on the different websites. So you also have other, you know, legal and non-legal publications such as, you know, the, the lawyer and, you know, Financial Times, if there are some, uh, you know, particular deals, that those are also some external sources that can be used. And of course, internally, uh, looking at the firm's, you know, own graduate recruitment website, but there are other social media platforms. So if you do perhaps a quick Google search and uh, look from, you know, the actual uh, website from the law firm, you can see tips uh, on, you know, that they have social media platforms on YouTube or LinkedIn. So there, there's quite a, a good mixture of sources to use. But again, just to reiterate, looking externally and internally at the at the law firm itself. Thank you so much. Nikita, same question to you. Yes, so I, I think actually Alex gave a very, very uh, good answer there. And I think the sort of uh, the paradigm of looking externally, uh, externally and then internally um, is a very good good way of looking at it. Um, I just have got, like, maybe a couple of things uh, to add on top of that. I, I think in my, my personal 
research strategy was to look at sort of some of the sort of key kind of surface level facts, so to speak, by looking at external sources. So, you know, uh, how many trainees might uh, come into a certain intake, um, you know, how international a firm is, just kind of this broad headline points. But I would really, really emphasize the internal sources over everything else, um, just because sometimes information, you know, if it comes from another other party might not necessarily reflect like the current state of things to the full extent um and uh just because i think to the extent you can meet someone and and, and get a sense of the firm you know face to face or directly i would say that ultimately was the most kind of important factor uh for me so it is a sort of funding process of get an idea and then really sort of hone in on the internals and i would really stress um that part of the process but as Alex says, there is a range of information out there. Um, you know, brief kind of profiles of firms uh, are, are available, um, and uh, you know, there are a lot of good resources out there, which um, which which I would say are a good starting point. Uh, so, if you're starting from the beginning, I would start there, but then try and get uh, into contact with firms as much as possible. Yeah, great. And probably worth saying that there, every firm that offers a training contract has a directory on Law Careers Net as well. And that has all that basic information. And the whole point is that you can get that basic information, then you can go off and do your own research. Um, someone's actually said, you know, what um, I thought was an interesting question, you know, what are these websites that talk about what makes law firms different? And that's kind of a hard question because there isn't like one place that you need to go and do that research yourself. So a lot of it is being proactive, I think, in, in finding that information um, within that research. Um, Eagle and Olivia, just was there any, were there any other places you wanted to recommend or um, we, I think we're going to talk about events and a bit of meeting people in person, but any other types of research or places people can go to get that information, Olivia? All I was just sort of listening and, and completely agreeing with everything that's been said in terms of starting with that basic research. I think any, whether it's online and I promise Bethany hasn't prepped me to say this, but things like the um, Vacation Scheme Insider and Meet the Lawyer on um, Law Careers Net, you know, any resource where it's actually based on a trainee or a lawyer's kind of personal experience, I think that will really help you to start to um, get a sense of the place and the people that work there beyond just the basic facts about the law firm. So, and there's there's a few platforms I know where we, you know, I ask a future trainee or a current trainee to kind of write a day in the life piece, you know, and it's so personal, you know, and you really get a sense of what they what a trainee actually does day to day, the, the interaction they have with senior lawyers, which again will, you know, speak to the culture because that, you know, speaking for Jones Day, our junior lawyers have a huge amount of interaction with with senior lawyers. So that tells you something about the way that, that we work here um, at Jones Day. So aside from, as Nikita said, any opportunities, and I know we'll speak about events to actually meet people is great, but there are also, there is online content where you can actually get a sense of the people that work there as well. So I would just recommend those generally. Thank you for shouting out our VAC scheme insiders and meet the lawyers. That's the whole point of them. They're supposed to be giving that insight. So, Eagle, was there anything to add from your side there? Um, I know a lot of uh, students like to reach out LinkedIn uh, to trainees, future trainees, uh, to us in the early careers team. Uh, and I know that different firms have different approaches to that and policies. And, uh, I just want to say that whilst I try to respond to everyone, I uh, don't expect all of your messages to be answered. Uh, but if you do genuinely have an, in, uh, an interest in a firm and want to hear more about it and you reach out, try to tailor your messages and try to make it relevant to the firm or even better to the individual that you're reaching out to. Uh, asking them about their experiences is always a good idea. Um, that goes for networking events as well. Get people talking about themselves and they'll talk to you. Um, that will give you a lot of information, but don't uh, don't send sort of generic questions or or ask anyone to review your application. That's probably not the best way to go. 
Yes, let's just stick on LinkedIn for a minute because I know we spoke about this in the run through and I think we all had a strong opinion about um, being inundated by messages and just making sure that if you are going to message people, whether that's recruiters or people like myself in content or, or lawyers, um, it's just about making sure you respect their time and, you know, the, the more specific, the better. Does anybody else want to, Alex, you're nodding, I'm not sure if you want to say anything about LinkedIn, uh, any advice that you've had on that? Yeah, you know, LinkedIn, I think usually, you know, it's, it's it's absolutely fine. And LinkedIn can sometimes even be essential, you know, to make uh, connections that you will liaise with afterwards. It can be used as a really good tool. But of course, if it's, you know, used correctly, I myself, uh, you know, I sometimes, uh, you know, try to respond uh, to as many students as I can, but I don't have, of course, you know, unlimited capacity. So, of course, it, it goes to the point again about, you know, tailoring your message a little bit. Maybe if you can find something something in common uh, with the one you're asking, uh, you know, uh, ask the person that you are asking, then you might, you know, be more likely to, to to get a response. So it's a bit about being, you know, a little bit more, you know, specific about this question instead of, you know, uh, I guess, uh, you know, kind of a scattergun uh, approach of asking so, uh, uh, you know, like a very very wide questions, you know. So you know, the more specific, the, the better, and you know, the, the easier it is for the, uh, you know, the, the person that you're asking to to respond. But I would just emphasize, it can be used as an absolutely excellent uh, tool. Yeah, I think we were saying that um, yesterday that research, you can use LinkedIn to research people as well and research firms. And you can also follow people without connecting with them if that's something you want to do, like a senior partner or uh, someone at the firm. That's a good way um, to add that sort of to sort of your social media feed and just get that information coming up quite organically. Um, Olivia or Nikita, was there anything you wanted to add about LinkedIn at all? I uh, Well, I just wanted to follow up on that point about researching uh, people as well. I know, um, you know, I. I come from a non-law background academically and there can sometimes be you know some slight apprehension about uh you know will that put me at a disadvantage you, you know what's the split like you know these, these sort of questions which naturally come up in the application process and i would say that looking at linkedin and you know seeing the sort of academic backgrounds of some of the you know people kind of ahead of you in the cohorts um you know, either trainees or associates uh just kind of put some of those um, worries just to rest for me and I could see that in people came from a whole range of different backgrounds um, to to Jones Day for example um, when I was applying there so um, yeah I, I, I just say I think that's a very good point and uh, something which I think can be quite easy to overlook. I love that that's really nice. <laughs> Nothing really to add from me, just completely agree. And, you know, in terms of the generic questions, make sure you're not asking a question that the answer is is on the law firm website. Um, and if you have sort of specific questions, you know, you're much, well, we, we sort of have a group sort of email inbox that's monitored by our whole team. So, um, you know, if you have specific questions around kind of your circumstances, your application, you know, we, we can kind of directly respond to you there. So I would always recommend sort of getting in touch with the, the graduate recruitment team directly um, rather than sort of direct message or anything. You've just got much higher chance of getting a response and a kind of direct response to the questions that you're asking. Great, thank you. Um, just to think about events and sort of the opportunity to meet people in person and here at Law Careers Net, we always say that actually, if you can meet people um, from the firm, that's really like the best way to conduct research where possible, because you can sort of meet people who work there and ask specific questions. So there's obviously a whole range of events. Um, you know, the autumn term is a really busy time for that as well as part of that research process. So maybe we'll just go to Alex and Nikita first, just to ask, did you attend any sort of events, not not back schemes, more like open days or events at your uni? Alex, I'll just come to you first. And how did that help your research? Right. So I did attend some networking uh, events just, you know, in the, perhaps the month before I moved to London, you know, I aimed aimed at uh, international students so so that is something to bear in mind to maybe attend networking events where you can relate a little bit more but that's not you know absolutely necessary but you might feel like a, a bigger connection to the group that you are networking with 
So I attended uh, an event, you know, uh, that that was organized by Global Lawyers Connect, first of all, but also something called the European Law Students Association, ELSA, uh, which I think, you know, all law students uh, would be able to, um, you know, they, they, they can become a member there and they host events such as I attended one called the International Summit on Competition Law in Istanbul. Um, just to, to learn a bit more about the topic where we spoke to very, you know, experienced lawyers, leaders in their field to, you know, get more motivation. So not only, you know, was that kind of a networking opportunity, but also something where you could kind of, uh, you know, uh, increase your knowledge in a particular field of law. I thought I wanted to be a competition lawyer, but, uh, you know, I kind of, that's an opinion that can change, you know, during your career. You And it kind of links into another point that, you know, you that we will come back to, I think that you don't absolutely need to be sure about the the field of law that that you know that you want to work in. but but again, um, you know that can be a good starting point. You can also, you know, just ask your um, university's careers team. Maybe they can point you in the right direction for a good um, networking event, at least for the universities that uh, you know that that I uh, studied at. Um, that was always a possibility. So if you don't know where to start, that's a good that's a good way to, to start. Thank you. Nikita, same question to you. Uh, yes, I, I I think my experience um, probably broadly chimes with what Alex said. Um, I think networking events, uh, which kind of, you know, have multiple firms attending um, are a very, very good starting point. I, I believe I actually met Joan Stay at, um, for the first time at one of these. Um, and and of course, you know, if if you have kind of careers fairs or specifically law fairs, some university have some universities have um, on their campuses or elsewhere. Um, that's a great starting point. Although, you know, if your university doesn't necessarily uh, have those opportunities, and that, then that that won't you know preclude you from seeing firms at other places. And often, graduate recruitment sites will sort of, um, if you look at them, they'll say, you know, we'll be attending this kind of event here you can be just here or here um and and it can sort of like track through and put those some things in your calendar and uh those are often well almost always in my opinion in my experience open to a wide range of people um so yeah that, that would be a good kind of thing for an initial conversation and then i think if you can meet firms at open days or things like that that's also a really valuable experience because then you can actually you know hear about the firm in their own words and sort of you know, in, in greater detail and meet a wider range of lawyers from those places, get a real sense of the actual place and the people or, um, you know, the experiences that people have had at those firms. So, uh, yeah, I think Alex has covered a lot of the uh, very good points there. So I, I don't think I have too much, too much more to add, but I would say it doesn't necessarily preclude you from applying if you didn't meet people in person. Um, it's just, in my opinion, those have been my best experiences. So. Yeah, it's always helpful for yourself as well to attend those events and, and speak to people because you can see whether you would be the sort of right fit with them or, um, you know, you can um, make it a two way process for sure. And I also would urge everybody to if you are at university to join your student law society, we do a lot of work with them, they do amazing events. I honestly don't think there's probably a better place where you, you can get all that information and events um, with the university and your student law society as well. Um, talking about amazing events, Law Careers at Live <laughs> is coming up um, at the end of November and December and Jones Day is sponsoring and that is our big legal careers conference. We actually do a virtual one as well, so in person and virtual. Um, but that's sort of a big networking event. And that that day, Olivia, is very jam packed with meeting students. <laughs> You're nodding your head it is exhausting, but it is really, really worthwhile. And, and just to say that applications are open now until the end of October. But maybe Olivia, for, for Elsie and Life, but also for um, other kind of big conferences or networking events, how can students really make the most of, of those encounters with firms? Well, I think events like Elsie and Live are brilliant from a, from a candidate perspective. You know, you've got all of these law firms, you know, some events that we, we've we been to are even cross-sector. So if you were thinking about other careers as well, but, you know, for LCN Live at least, you've got all of these law firms in one room and there's always, you know, law careers ensure there's a real mix of different firms as well. So, you know, you can really get a sense and, you know, to, to that question around how can I actually, you know, tell these law firms apart, an event, you know, you, 
I can guarantee you would leave LCN live having a much clearer picture of how we are different to say Watson Farley Williams or a magic circle firm or kind of a smaller, smaller law firm. So, and you know, you're, you're kind of getting all that done in, in one day, um, in one go. So I would definitely recommend it. I mean, from our perspective, it's a great opportunity to obviously meet lots of students and just have some really great conversations. Like we're saying, you know, trying to bring e these law firms to life from the page or from the screen. Well, a, a, you know, an opportunity to to speak to someone like me from the graduate recruitment team who can shed a bit more light on what it is we're really looking for, how to kind of impress through different stages of the application process and even just explaining more detail what what to expect from our recruitment process which can again differ greatly from from firm to firm I will also always ensure we've got you know sort of current trainees and even perhaps future trainees at our stand as well so that's obviously a brilliant opportunity to speak to them and I would always recommend you know, really asking questions around their personal experience, a bit like what I was saying with the, the VAC scheme insider or meet the lawyer, you know, you taking that opportunity to actually find out about people's actual experience working at the firm um, will we'll just make those interactions so much more meaningful and you will get a lot more from those interactions. And again, you'll be able to start to tell the firms apart in just being able to see how, the trainees speak about their kind of day-to-day -day life, the way that their training is structured or not structured. Um, you know, so you can just get a sense of of the culture of the place. And I will sort of come on to that as well in terms of questions to ask. But just by having those conversations with sort of real people and asking, you know, what is it really like, you know, in the non-rotational system? That's an answer that, you know, no website will be able to tell you. It's And they will really speak from the from their experience so I would just make the most of the experience speak to as many different law firms as you can I think it's worth doing some sort of prior research just to be able to you know maybe hone in on a certain firms that you know you definitely want to speak to because you know you're interested in the non-rotational training system for example but I would also say with events, like, don't be afraid. You don't need to say, come up to me at an event and need to know all about Jones Day. You know, I'm, I'm also more than happy to have those initial conversations and kind of introduce you to Jones Day as well. So, um, so yeah, I would recommend doing some research so you have an idea of who's in the room, but also take that opportunity. Perhaps it's the first event that you'll be going to. Don't be afraid to just ask us the questions you gen generally want the answer to. Um, try not to worry about that you need to ask a very kind of highly complex and in intelligent question. You know, just saying, you know, what is it like working at Jones Day? Um, you know, we'll get a much more sort of interesting answer, I would say. Thank you. And just spinning off from that, either say a student um, goes to an event and has a great interaction with someone from the firm, do they then name drop them in the application? I think some people can take that too far, but what would be your advice to sort of maximising that interaction and then sort of maybe mentioning it on an application? Yeah, um, I'm when I'm reading an application and someone's met uh, someone from the firm, I'm less interested to know that they've met them, more interested to learn what they got from that. So uh, getting the basics right is all where I start with all applications. So making sure you spell their name and their title right. Uh, but then apart from that, um, say you met Dev, uh, who's one of our property disputes partners, um, and you learned something from him. What did you learn from that? Why was that interesting to you? What what did that tell you about Watson Farley? Um, how did that maybe uh, relate to some of the things that you look for in a law firm? Those are the kind of things that you really want to show, and that's what you want to leverage that um when you're writing the application uh because it shows you've asked some insightful questions uh it shows that you've done some research and learned from from that conversation with dev or whoever else you might be speaking to um but having a name in the application for the sake of it um won't make much of a difference at all 
that goes with everything in an application. If you don't back it up or provide extra sort of um, explanational context, I think um, I think that's great advice. Thank you um, so much. Right, we are we've got so much to get through. So we're going to do five minutes on researching firms specifically. That's their practice areas work clients that sort of thing so i thought it might be nice um for maybe olivia and eagle just to start you know give us give us your usp of olivia you can start with jones day what do you think is the most important thing you'd expect someone to know before applying it has to be our trading system i've already name dropped it um in, in the event that it, it yeah it has to be our non-rotational training system um, and it's it's really important for students to get a sense of of what it is and, and how it works and really think about whether it's the sort of right system for you as part of that prior research, as, as we've been saying. So it's very different in the sense that um, we do not have any seats as part of our training contract. Um, and I know Eagle will come on to describe the, the seat structure at Watson Farley. But so at Jones Day, our trainees have the sort of freedom, the flexibility to explore their interests through the training contract without sort of being assigned to, to, to separate seats. And I know Nikita will obviously be able to speak to this from firsthand experience. You know, we see obviously there's huge benefits to that in terms of the training experience of being able to kind of direct your training in the way that you want to and kind of let it evolve through the training contract completely directed by your own interests um but also i think we find that it creates very well-rounded lawyers at the end of it um and our newly qualified associates become hugely sort of embedded into the teams and that sort of transition from trainee to associate is completely a seamless one as a result in terms of getting involved in in matters through the training contracts obviously not being limited to a specific six month period you don't need to leave a deal just as it's closing um, and pass it on to the next trainee you know you you get that sort of broad experience by being able to see matters potentially from com the complete sort of beginning all the way through to the end and obviously the experience of just being able to see how that happens um, is obviously hugely um, beneficial so yes it, it's very different in the market um, and absolutely something to think about in terms of if it's the right system for you. Obviously, it demands a bit more of that kind of independent working from our trainees. You need to be comfortable managing your own own workload, managing different priorities and communicating. Communication is the absolute key to, to our system. Um, so, yeah, something to, to think about. But that's definitely a big USP when it comes to, to Jones Day. And I think, you know, that's part of that introspection as well of working out if that's what you actually want to do, if that suits you and that style, because you can't apply for that if you're not, you know, 100% sure that that's, that's going to suit you. So um, that's part of that research as well. And um, Eagle, just maybe I mean, you can talk about um, Watson Farley's training programme and any other USPs that you think the, the firm has people should know about. Sure. Um, I believe it's alluded to it. So most firms do four seats, uh, so you do six months in each practice area. Um, we do six seats, so you do spend four months in each. So uh, the idea being you get to try as much uh, of the different practice areas as you want. Um, we also have a guaranteed international secondment, so all of our trainees will spend at least one seat abroad. Um, and we're a sector-focused firm. So Alex touched upon the shipping side of it. Essentially, we're split in three different sectors that we focus on. So we do transport, which is shipping, aviation, rail, and a bit of uh, sort of satellite work in there. Um, then there's energy and uh, infrastructure. So that also informs a lot of the training that we do with trainees. And if those, if you'd be interested in exploring one of those sectors, you get to work with lawyers who have a lot of uh, expertise in that, in those sectors, and can really help you sort of accelerate your growth within that as well. And you would expect 
students and applicants to be aware of the training program and that information is accessible on the website because someone has just asked where do I find out this information and I'm assuming both of your graduate recruitment websites have all the information that anyone would need to know yeah we I don't know about Olivia we don't stop banging on about it so it's <laughs> everywhere um it doesn't mean you have to be set on becoming a shipping lawyer for example but knowing that we do it and having an open mind to it is crucial yeah Great. absolutely I agree yeah. if I yeah had a had a pound for how many times I say <laughs> non-rotational training contracts throughout <laughs> August to to January I would be a very rich person um, but yeah no it's something yeah you know pretty much all of our events are kind of centered around around that system because it is just so sort of influential just in how our sort of office runs even from the, the lawyer side as well so so yeah it's it, the basics are on the website but again through different events and other resources mm. that's where you can really understand what it's actually like to train within that system mm. so it would recommend both that's why meeting people from both your firms is so important to hear how their experiences were I guess um, just before we sort of talk about that research into um, practice areas, I know Alex, I want to come back to you about sort of how much you need to know about practice areas. Maybe Nikita, just if you had any thoughts on training program, because um, Olivia obviously mentioned about you having done that you did the VAC scheme, didn't you? So just sort of like how how that research and um, sort of impacted you and um, your sort of career um, progression sort of thing. Uh, well, so. When I was applying for firms, I was very much looking for a firm which would allow me to try a wide range of practice areas um, because I wasn't entirely sure where I wanted to practice, um, especially coming from a non-law background. I didn't really have that you know, as much exposure to different ends of law as some other people. Um, and so I was looking for, for something which would give me a sense of sort of agency and independence and a wide sort of breadth of work. And so when I heard about James Day's non-rotational training program, which, um, as Olivia said, is one of our, is one of the firm's USPs. I um, like it sounds like the perfect fit for me. And and then I you know spoke to lawyers at the firm, and I really saw like, like, like a cultural fit there as well. Um, and the VAC scheme just really sort of reinforced that because I you know I think of course in my VAC scheme I I did things I, I took bits and pieces from sort of four different practice areas kind of at the same time um you know from contentious to uh non-contentious and like advisory so it was uh something on the, on the corporate matter a a dispute and uh sort of the uh, competition law side of things um and i just absolutely love that because that was exactly the sort of experience which i was looking for and was you know specifically kind of honing my research to find um and i found that you know, if I funneled me to a place where I can actually confirm you know, through the vacation scheme process that it was the case and it was was available to me. And then training at the firm has sort of just been an extension of that. So I, I felt kind of very lucky in that way. Um, uh, yeah, just 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 the like sheer breadth of things I've tried has been, has been fantastic. So um, I would, yeah, that's why I would say that the research process is important because you need to know yourself. Like the firm has to be right for you as much as you fit the firm. Great, thank you. Alex, did you have anything to add or can I ask you about, <laughs> to come back to the practice area point, um, you said you were sort of thinking you would want to go into competition and then things slightly changed. So I think a lot of um, students and future lawyers sort of worry about how much they have to be sure or um, about their, um, you know, intended practice area. So maybe you can talk a bit about that. Thank you for the question. Yeah, well, I think, of course, here you can see that uh, you don't have to be an, an expert from the outset at all in the area. But some interests will go uh, a long way. And, for example, researching, um, you know, different uh, commercial trends uh, can also uh, help uh, both in, you know, for, for the vacation scheme and training contract applications. But uh, taking a step back and looking at the sources uh, where you would where you would look into would be Legal Five Hundred first of all, as I mentioned, where you can see snippets of deals in uh, a summary form. 
which excellently can be integrated into uh, different uh, VAC scheme or training contract applications, as well as the chambers and, and partners, just to see, and also where you can confirm where um, the broad and the kind of the, the best uh, areas uh, of, of, of the law firm in question. But looking at deals in itself, you know, there can be a, you know, a plethora of, of deals. So, you know, one one approach you could do is also just look at the uh, press releases from, from the law firm, which often you can find on their website or even on, you know, on, on LinkedIn. That, that, that can help uh, a lot. And another thing, and this links into the networking uh, point which we spoke about earlier before i when i researched watson Farley and williams i actually spoke to a couple of uh, norwegian lawyers and, and lawyers that I, that I met through networking events that have uh, liaised with watson Farley and williams and then i got some kind of insider information um beforehand where i could ask frank questions about the culture for example you know a common denominator was a very approachable and inclusive uh, culture of Watson Paul and, and Williams. And that is something that I can now, um, of course, confirm working in the asset finance seat, having spoken to, you know, yeah. everything from partners, senior lawyers, all the trainees and, and other staff. Uh, so that was something very, you know, important for me to look at actually how, what is the, you know, inside culture of, of, of the law firm. Now, researching deals and everything, I think one thing to be mindful of is there are, there is always kind of a point of um, an extent of commercial awareness that you can in integrate. For example, if you are researching a deal that interests you extra more, then maybe have a think about how can I integrate commercial awareness here when you're, for example, seeing a type of a, a loan agreement, for example, like maybe in application, if they allow you or later in an interview, you can speak about different kind of, you know, um, the, the different elements of a loan agreement that, and um, you know, being forward looking and all of that. So, it, it all kind of links it links together in in, in that way um, but there are loads of sources as as you know I have wonderfully uh, predicted uh, a question that's come in which I've um, just said is answered someone's asking about so where do you find um, the deals that law firms are involved in which I think you've summarized but thank you very much um Nikita just over to you as well you know researching you know um firms practice areas deals even sort of clients and competitors was that part of your process how much research into that did you do um i did do quite a bit of research into that uh and the reason i, I wanted to do that was to kind of understand where sort of firms were in in the market and get an idea i guess of the broader sort of legal landscape um i think I'd, i have a couple of points which i'd like to make here um one being that you know firm, firms have always tried to publish you know and highlight some of the key experiences on their websites and and uh, that's always a good starting point um but that would often be quite like a broad sort of overview of something they've done and if you kind of want to dig deeper it sometimes might have like a, like a deeper dive sort of um publication or commentary on something recent um but that's really just like a a, a starting point uh and then and then you know, if you want to kind of look deeper you can you know, look at the Financial Times or other sort of business publications um, uh, or try and, you know, if you have access to sort of um, certain databases or, or just on the internet, kind of look into how some of those cases might work, what sort of the some of the legal aspects um, might be. But, um, but I wouldn't focus too much on, on competitors in terms of... Um, in terms of like broad outlines, because I think there are so many different ways of cutting this and you have to really understand the nuances of different practice areas and different firms, different firms sort of compete on in different kind of areas in different ways. Um, so I think that is a question which uh, you should definitely look at, but you have to understand that there are a lot of like nuances there. And sometimes people would say, oh, you know, for, for example, uh, you're both kind of big international firms and therefore, you know, you, you'll be competing with each other. And that might not necessarily be the case if the practice areas or, or the kind of sectors we focus on are very different. You know, uh, there might be some overlap in some areas, but it, it, it would it would be it wouldn't be a complete analysis to say, therefore, the firms are just competing against each other in that way. So I think um, 
I think a good way of 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 looking at this is start yeah start with the firm's websites start with the sort of deals they've been on um and and then if you can find information about sort of who's acted opposite each other on different uh you know corporate deals or litigations um you know more sort of contentious matters to try and build up an idea that way um but also like the legal 500 rankings uh might give you some idea of that and kind of see see sort of a bit more of like a more robust dive into um where firms kind of but where, where some of the niche of practice areas i guess overlap um so yeah it all of that all of that process is really useful to building an idea of the firm and kind of contextualize it as well so i'd say that is important Thank you. That's good advice. And I'm sure it sort of leads me on to my next question, which I was going to ask Eagle, because I'm sure some students might be thinking, oh, my gosh, that's so much I need to research. You know, am I supposed to be an expert in all of this? And I think it'd be nice for you to reassure our viewers that they don't need to be an expert and all of that. It's kind of that context and that awareness point. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I think it comes back to what I talked about early, which was what is it you're looking for in a law firm? Uh, and then finding that hook with that particular law firm. Like we have people applying to us because they really want to be shipping lawyers. If that's what you want to focus on, fantastic. Spend uh, your application talking to us about that. Show the research you've done into it. Explain why it's interesting to you. Um, if you want to apply to us because uh, pretty much everything we do, even in London office, is international. You want to get international experience. You're quite interested in working within the energy sector. Great then that's your reason for wanting to apply to us. Um, there are a lot of different uh, reasons for applying to, I think, all firms in the city, and it's about finding the ones that really fit with you. It doesn't mean you have to be an expert. If you want to be a shipping lawyer, or you want to work in energy, or you want to be uh, working, uh, do construction disputes, you can talk about why it's interesting to you. It doesn't mean you have to be able to sit down and have an in-depth conversation with a partner about it. Exactly. That That's great. Um, gosh, we've really <laughs> whizzed through and I just wanted to fi finish with before we go to some questions I can see have come in, but some of these actually do relate to this. That final point in terms of that research, and I think you've mentioned that there as well, Eagle, is like linking your own personal interests and motivations to your research. So, Olivia, is there anything else to say about, you know, how can they avoid sounding generic avoid you know sort of just shoehorning their research in it's about making it personal right and so so you know i'm sure you've read a million applications and seen people that do it well and not so well so what's your advice for that yeah definitely i think it completely ties in ev everything that's that's been said around just as long as you're linking it to your personal interests then you know you're on you're on the right track i do you know reading lots of applications you can see quite you can tell quite quickly when a candidate hasn't sort of really taken the time to put some research in you know there might be a case sort of just thrown into the cover letter but it's you can you know it's just a copied you know the basic facts have just been copied in it's that that's not enough you need to say why that particular case interested you. As Eagle said, is it the international aspect? Is it the sector that it's within? Is it that the client that they you know, the, the law firm has advised that's particularly interesting to you? So just linking it to your interests, you know, is is just so important and will help to take your application from just de you know demonstrating that you've, you know, you have a basic understanding to that more advanced understanding. And I think when it comes to later down the line, if it's interviews or sort of in-person interactions that you might get to have on an assessment centre, for example, if you're able to kind of form an opinion and, you know, articulate your thoughts around a particular deal or, you know, it's about seeing that potential if you can start to kind of think like a lawyer. So, you know, it's not just reading the facts of an article. It's thinking about, well, how would if I was advising this business, how would that impact? What are the risks? What are the opportunities this could present? You know, if it's a large M&A deal, is there a competition or antitrust angle? You know, it's thinking a bit more broadly. And one of our senior partners that we work with quite closely says that so much of, of being a lawyer, and particularly as a junior lawyer on, on in, 
on certain matters. There's so much sort of horizon scanning. It's your thinking about what's coming down the line. How will this impact my client? You know, and that's where a lot of the value in the client service comes from. It's your your preempting what might happen down the line for your client and being able to sort of best prepare them and, you know, take advantage of the opportunity. So, you know, that, that I know that's kind of gone on to more of the bigger picture, but it, it is relevant to you at this stage. If you can sh- start to show us that you can think about issues in that way and you can think further than just the, the sort of surface level facts, then you're showing us that you've got you've got that potential to to think like a lawyer. So it is and completely echo the point around you don't need to be an expert at all. Just having that genuine interest and that will shine through. If it's genuine, it will shine through. If it isn't genuine, that will also shine through in terms of we'll be able we'll be able to tell. Um so, so yeah, just just make sure whatever you're speaking about, whether on an application or, or in the v- interview it's of real sort of interest to you. Um, and if it is, then that kind of enthusiasm and passion will will come through. I think enthusiasm and passion is just such a good point because we always say there's no point having done this research if you're not then excited to sort of apply it. And, and you know, you're like, oh, that's a great case. I'd love to do something like that. Or that links to this and that. Like it, there's no point just doing that surface level research. That is, you know, the, the, the best way to put it in the application is to show that. Uh, motivation and um, enthusiasm and um, right quick fire because we have got uh, four more minutes um, and there's lots of questions coming in and just to say I can see lots of people are asking sort of more details about the application so I'm probably not going to answer those because as I said we've got a whole separate masterclass which um, about applications in three weeks and we'll probably cover all of those then and you can come and ask them again then um someone has said to, i mean there's a couple of sort of eventsy ones and i just thought i'd answer these quickly do i need to be a student to attend a law fair depends on your university sometimes they let graduates in um, but there are loads of um and someone else said about graduates saying they're a graduate there are loads of events lcn live is open to graduates and career changes and postgraduate students um, loads of networking events online the events that firms do as well um when you sometimes they are specific to sort of groups um but sometimes um they're often just open to everybody so just have a look online there's an lcn events page as well which has lots of different um events um commercial awareness ah this is great because this links to what alex wants to talk about as well um how well I mean someone's asked the question which we actually never got around to which is how you demonstrate commercial awareness in an application and how do you do that into your research so Alex I'll just come to you because I know you wanted to mention we love this at LCN the SWOT and PES analysis and how that sort of helps with the research commercial awareness and researching firms as well yeah no absolutely I mean the one aspect of commercial awareness is you know staying commercially aware understanding you know how Pers- uh, businesses work from a micro perspective, you know, like how they make money. And of course, from a macro perspective, how external factors af- affect the firm very, very broadly. And the question is, how can you show that? Well, then you can use two quite useful frameworks, works called the SWOT uh, framework, uh, which, you know, is, is an uh, abbreviation for uh, strength, weaknesses, uh, opportunities, and, 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 and threats. So looking at that, you know, seeing a deal, seeing a law firm in itself, having done all your research and you're trying to sort your thoughts together, then you can try to analyze the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats of, of, of the firm. Um, me personally, I knew uh, Watson Pauli has uh, been uh, a lot in, you know, uh, a lot of renewable energy projects and uh, a lot of uh, engagements with, with that, which I thought was very important, which could, uh, from a commercial awareness perspective, be Im- important for uh, looking at the energy transition. So knowing that clients, this is something that clients will want looking at ESG factors. Very short, the PESL an- uh, analysis would be uh, analyzing the firm or deal from a political perspective, economic perspective, social perspective, technological perspective, legal perspective, and environmental perspective. So all these frameworks, SWOT and PESL, can help you just structure your thoughts a little bit. You might not need to use absolutely every single element, but it's a help. It helps you to you helps you as kind of a thinking framework, so to say. So that's just what I want to say about about that. 
No, that's great. We actually have a series on LCN called Wrestle with Pestle, um, which we love the name of, where we go through different issues. And um, my colleague did one about the Taylor Swift era's tour, and it was the best article I've ever read going through the different impacts. But that just shows how you can apply it um, to so many different things. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. And I just wanted to say that I've seen a few questions coming in, and I think these ones are really hard to answer. You know, how many applications should I make? How long should I spend? It's really hard to quantify these things, but just in terms of number of applications, and you're going to hear this in our applications masterclass it is definitely quality over quantity we would always say the fewer more well-researched applications the better and hopefully today you've sort of maybe had a bit of understanding of how much research needs to go into an application i wouldn't be able to quantify it you know it in hours or time but as we said you know the majority of writing an application is actually that research process um, and that's attending things like this and the events and the online research and the meeting people um so you know there isn't really a finite time we can give you but it's just the more the better until you feel comfortable and ready and you know sure that you have made the best application and it is the right fit for you so hopefully that's a little bit of helpful uh, parting wisdom i'm just going to do our last poll which we like to do at the end if my maths would work um which is your um next steps we'd love to hear what you've learned from today and kind of more proactively what are you going to do in your next step so have you now got a plan of sort of starting? Are you going to try and meet uh, for firms at events? Do you have sort of a list of things you're now ready to research? Is it about fine tuning your research ahead of making an application or something else? So I'll just give you 10 more seconds on that. But while you do that, just to say, um, if there's something else um, that you have a different key takeaway, um, please pop it in the feedback survey that's going to pop up at the end. That's just for you to fill in. Let us know how you've enjoyed today, what other topics we should do um, and sort of give your feedback to us and our wonderful panellists today. And do check out um, our upcoming masterclasses on LCN events as well. And I will put all the links um, that I've mentioned today um, in that follow up email too. Right, let's share this just so we can all go away feeling <laughs> motivated. Well, wow, that's great. So actually, so the majority is very evenly split, but lots of people are going to go to events, lots of people knowing where to start, people um, sort of having that list of things to research or lots of people, which is great to see fine tuning their research. So thank you very much for that. OK, we will leave you there. So just thank you so much to our great panel today. It's been so nice speaking to you. And I feel like I've already had lots of comments come in from the Q&A, people saying they found today super helpful. Um, so hopefully we've left everybody feeling a bit more prepared uh, for the uh, research um, part of applying. Um, don't forget to um, have a look at our events page for all the future masterclasses. And we will see you at our next event. So thank you.